Had a, a sold out show this year, sold over 1,200 tables, and we thought we'd uh, take you around and let you see a few things. Being a bit self centered myself, I thought maybe we'd start at my booth and I'll show you this nice dagger. This is, um, this is one of the best daggers I've ever seen. Um, as you can see, it's a, it's a chained high leader, uh, but it's absolutely exceptional. Not made by Eichhorn, but made by the Horster firm. Uh, we saw this dagger for the first time at Max One in 1985 back in St. Louis. If you look at the fittings, you see that it has almost a Celtic look to the engraving. It's just absolutely wonderful. The leather is uh, from age, has uh, come apart some, but still because of the integrity of the dagger, you really wouldn't want to change the leather on it. I think it looks just fine the way it is. I'll show you inside, the, the blade is really fantastic. It's, a, it's an etched Damascus blade, and they, you'll see that the Horster Company put their trademark on the obverse of the blade, not the reverse. And the reason for that is, wow, look at that reverse. There wasn't enough room for the trademark. Uh, just wonderful blue and, and gold work. Uh, the dagger was given as a, as, as a 40th birthday present. And we do know the name of the man it was given to. It's, it's crossed out on the dagger because he didn't want to be identified at the end of the war. And I'll just show you with the video. I can't pronounce his name, but it's like Lucian Waisaki. So not Icorn was not the only maker of high leader daggers. So that'll get you started with a taste of the show, and uh, we're going to walk around and see if we can talk to some dealers. Okay, we're still at my stand, and I thought I would share with you a, what I consider a, a very important uh, piece of artwork. As you see, it'll be the Fuhrer. Maybe we wouldn't want to have uh, Adolf in our living room, but nonetheless, it's a very historical painting. Uh, I bought this painting a couple of years ago. It had been cut out of a frame by a veteran. It was hanging in Hitler's suite in the Deutscherhof Hotel in Nuremberg, and it had been rolled up for 70 years in a museum who never wanted it. So I had the painting for about a year, and at first I thought, oh, I'm not going to restore it. And then I changed my mind, and I got a hold of a fantastic man who has restored paintings for the Smithsonian, Philadelphia Art Museum, etc. And uh, you can see here what this painting looked like when we first got it. This is the statement of the veteran here that brought it back. And it's kind of interesting when, when he had the painting out of the Deutscherhof and into his room, one of his buddies came in and threw a beer bottle through Hitler's face. So the painting had quite a, quite a rip in it, in addition to all of the cracked um, the paint. But you can see the Fuhrer survived pretty good. This painting was uh, done by Kunz Weidlich. And uh, Herr Weidlich was uh, famous during the time. He was a toy designer for Bing Company and he's credited with the uh, originator of the Steiff teddy bears. So apparently Hitler wanted a good um, example of himself to hang in his suite in the Deutscherhof. As you know, he stayed there every year during party day in September, and I'm pretty proud of this. I think it's, a, it's, it's historically an important portrait. And maybe someday it'll be in a museum. Right now we don't want anything to do with Hitler, I guess, but uh, we, we at least have to put it away until the times are right. Maybe another generation. You can see also I had a, 
a frame made that was subdued because that's the way Hitler would have liked to have been seen. He didn't like a lot of glitz. So I think it, I think it looks pretty good. I hope you like it. Well, we're coming down the aisles here at the Mac Show, and we run into one of the famous men in our hobby. He's a well-known author, collector of hatch bayonets, Mr. Wayne Tackett from Las Vegas. How are you, sir? I'm doing just fine. Really How you nice doing, to Tom? see you. We're fine. Thank you very much. You have a fantastic display of hatch bayonets, as usual. Well, they're and, uh, show us something that you really like. Well, this is a this is a really nice. Uh, a uh, mint example of an icorn artillery with the artillery piece up in the top and then their normal eagle down in the bottom, but it's a really minty piece. Uh, that you that find is them minty. Well. Now you say it's artillery. What do we have? A cannon here. A cannon up on yeah. the top. And what then, was the number of this set? I forget. Uh, this was 3220. Two. This 32. man knows his stuff. <laughs> There's 32. I was going to say 3219, but that's no, the 32, standard. No, 3219 is your standard. <laughs> that's the one that you say. The 3220 would be this one with the art, with the infantry on it. See, this is why you got to get with Wayne. He knows what this subject is all about. <laughs> now, what would a bayonet like that sell for approximately? I know they're really valuable because that's a rare pattern. That's a rare pattern. You can't find them. I don't think there's another one of these at the show here. Is that so? To be honest with you. And uh, this one would be around 2100. That's not too bad, though. No, not bad at all, considering how rare it is. Don't you think that the quality of Vetch bayonets is way up there with the boost pieces? And, I mean, they're they're underappreciated. Really. Underappreciated is, really is exactly the word. And uh, uh, these etch pieces, while they were sold as souvenirs to the to the enlisted men, so that they could wear them with their uniforms, uh, were just splendid when it comes to the art and the art deco that's on many of the different uh, uh, designs. Uh, it's really great how they use the frosting in the background to highlight the raised highlight, relief. Right. Which of course was uh, plated. So. Or at times they might uh, put a bluing in the background. That was available. That yeah. was available. It was yeah. an option. And uh, uh, you don't see many blue pieces. No. Those are quite rare. But I, 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 I have um, two blued pieces in my collection, and those are the only ones I've seen in, well... They're hard to find, that's why they're in your collection. Ah. <laughs> well, we appreciate you sharing the time with us. Do you have a good time at the Max? I always have a good time at the Max. Always. That's Each and every day. year. We appreciate Thank you, Tom, very much. I hope you do well. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you. We're just stopping by Dr. Ron Distelhorst display here, and as usual, the doctor has some of the greatest stuff you'll ever see. Look at this cap here. I don't even know what that is. What is it, a judge's hat or no, something, no, it's Ron? A high ranking diplomat. See, so shows you what I know. Boy, that's a beauty. It's pretty pretty to look at. Sure is. Yeah, we're up here in the um, in the front of the main hall at the convention center. Big high ceilings, great light. And as you can see, just looking around. Uh, there's some fantastic stuff here. Absolutely fantastic. There's old Rex Reddick's display over there. If you're looking for a phony stand art or something, it's all there. But there's plenty of real things here, too. type of armor that the Imperial Cavalry wore. A lot of these things will have French markings on them that are stamped over with German markings because they were 
captured during the Franco-Prussian War in the 1870s. Beautiful things, though. Absolutely beautiful. Well, we're coming down the aisles here. This is a table full of a lot of really nice edge weapons. Apparently, the owner here has an affinity with the German police, from what I can see. Oh, it's Ed Sunday. How are you, Ed? Great. You enjoying yourself, buddy? Oh, I love it. You're not selling jewelry, are you? I know what my wife is. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. What are you doing with all these police bayonets? I love it. Yeah, I need to get the bayonet. On off. 30 years. I've always had it. I'll give you 500 apiece for all of them. I'll top it. Boy, you really got some nice things here. You enjoying yourself, were you? I'm always glad to see you. You never miss a max. I've got to come back and buy some of these. There's some really nice things here. We take my check. My wife is. Okay. Well, continuing along here at the show, we come across an interesting table here that has a lot of varied items. Is Mr. Gary Rule here? How are you, Gary? Good job. Nice to see you. I know you a long time, I think. You, uh, uh, many years. Many years, yeah. What is this um, silverware you have here? I, that's an interesting pattern. I've never seen it before. Uh, it's Von Ribbentrop. Ah. Yeah. It's, the uh, uh, the <clears throat> diplomat. Yeah. Wow. And in the description here is uh, the pattern. This. Scallop shell. shell fan at the base of the handle. Yeah. Hallmark unknown. Uh huh. Which, you know, these are the silver plated versions. Yeah, which, right. You know, like all the top high officials. Yeah. You know, they had places all over. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's some interesting uh, flatware. Yes. And, you know, the thing is, you know, no hallmark. No like hallmark on them. Yeah. And then you're selling some helmets and hats and got a nice Luftwaffe dagger here. A little bit of everything. Are yeah. you enjoying yourself? Always. Good. Thanks for talking to us. Well, we stopped at another table along here. What caught our eye was this huge eagle here. It's absolutely immense. And it comes off of an, an electric train that was run during the Third Reich. Uh, I'm going to show you. It looks like it weighs three tons, but it really doesn't. See that? Old Whitman was able to lift it up. What's interesting about it too, and you'll look and you'll see that the wings were originally cut off of the bird's breast because that was the only way to get it home because of the size of it. But still, it is, it is what it is, and it's a great, great thing. Uh, it's owned by Bill Renault. Uh, if you want to contact him, he's got a, a website. B-R-A-N-N-O-W at artswords.com. Uh, I don't know what he's asking for. Somewhere around twelve or thirteen thousand. Fantastic piece. So we stopped over here to see my partner Tom Johnson at the Mac show, and of course he always has a outstanding display here and we'll try to pan by and maybe you can see a few of the things that he has. It's a pretty nice display case here with some uh, some really outstanding naval daggers. This example on the left is really outstanding. Ivory grip with a 1918 date on it. One next to it with a blue panel. And a beautiful ivory grip and Damascus blade. And of course, what would the Max be without a Himmler or two to look at? I'm sorry, this one is an Ernst Rome, full room. The one next to it is the Himmler dagger. There's a couple of interesting things here. Two prototype daggers. You see that, uh, like a Red Cross piece, and I don't know what 
this bayonet was made for on the left, but it's got quite an interesting cross guard on it. One of a kind. Well, we stopped up in the front of the hall here, and look who we ran into, my old buddy Ron Winan. Ron, Tom, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great right now. I guess we know each other, what, 30 years at least? Maybe oh, more, more than, than that. that. More than that, yeah. yeah. It goes back to the old uh, St. Peter Hall. You when know. we were all learning in those days. Yes. Yeah. You got quite a bunch of stuff here. Uh, in fact, you got uh, tons of stuff. It really is a great display. How you been doing? The dagger sales good or? Uh, uh, dagger nothing? sales are uh, medium right now. Medium, yeah. Uh, many of the foreigners are the customers. I agree with that. Yeah. And uh, some walk-in stuff has been good. I got a walk-in railway leader that came through the front door. Today or yesterday? Yesterday, yes. Wow, that's wonderful. And the wonderful. Russians bought it today. <laughs> so it pay it pays to have a table up by the door. Is you that what you're betcha. telling me? You betcha. I missed out again. Yep. Oh, boy, it. And you do that to yourself. I know. I, that's that's a sacrifice that Mr. Whitman makes for the hobby. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Show us something that's nice, Ron. You got something that the yes, collectors would like idea. to see. As you know, uh, I do buys from veterans and old collections. I know that. And in this case here, we have daggers that still have the unissued tag remaining on the grip. That's amazing. Yeah. How would that happen? Uh, the veteran ran into a storehouse or a, uh -huh. a place that sells daggers in Germany during the war, and he proceeded to take things. No, he, liberate, liberate. Yeah, I yeah. like to take things better yeah. because they have no conscience. That's so right. he brought it home as a souvenir, and then the family or the kids yeah. get tired of it, and yeah. I'm the beneficiary. It seems odd to me that a tag would remain on something so long. I, I would think 90% of the time the tag probably got torn off. Probably more got than 90%. Home. Yeah. It so depends on... It's the really kid, rare. I to can see hear that. the father. Don't play with it. Yeah. Right. It'll hurt. <laughs> That's right. Okay. And I see you have Margaret with you. Yes. Holding the fort down over there. It, it's nice making to have. Making sure you behave yourself. It's nice to have a wife who wants to be a partner. You know, that's a rare commodity yes, in this it is. business. And I've been very fortunate. Yes, you have. Well, we wish you well, and uh, I'm sure you're enjoying yourself at the match, aren't you? Have I something? ever not? No. <laughs> we always have a great time at the match. Ron also is the uh, chairman of our seminar program, and he does a great job uh, getting people to speak each year. And it's not easy, you know. Uh, no, our group is rather easy. shy, and uh, well, it's a tough I, thing. And, uh, some people make a commitment, and then for some unforeseen uh, yeah. reason, can't be yeah. here. So it can I, get frustrating. I hope that all of you watching this. Anybody that has a seminar that they'd like to give, please get a hold of us. That's a great, that's a great pitch, yeah. uh, and he does mean yeah. that. Some I of you guys it. out there that know a lot about something and want to share it, what an opportunity it is here. And we'll give you the platform. You bet. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Good luck to you, buddy. Thanks. Yep. see we're out front of the convention center here and we thought you'd give you a good view of what it looks like it's a great looking building and we're really only about a mile and a half from the Pennsylvania Turnpike outside of Pittsburgh it's very easy to get to either fly into the Pittsburgh Airport or if you drive it's an easy drive and this time of the year we have the leaves just starting to turn in the Pocono Mountains and it's a really a, a, a nice thing as you can see, this facility is uh, first rate. It's only three years old, and it's fantastic inside. Boy, we stopped by at the Burmeister booth here, and this this eagle just balls you over. Look at look how beautiful that is. All in silver with lovely patina, and Jason's got a, a signed autograph photo of Hitler in, in one of the official state presentation frames along with the the um, cassette box. He's got a couple of diplomatic orders there. Look at the beauty of that. Let me ask you a question. How long does it take? Then we go to the left and 
it looks as though Jason has a um, NSKK high leader as well as an SA high leader. <coughs> Very beautiful daggers. <laughs> Nothing but the best here at the Mac Show. You'll see everything. All the stuff that you've seen in books, you'll find it here for you to look at and sometimes you can even handle it if you do it delicately and maybe wear some gloves even. Doesn't hurt. Okay, we uh, we thought we would just let you know that um, not only is that AH picture autographed, but it's to Von Rundstedt, uh, who of course was a field marshal uh, during the war. Very important photograph. And the uh, eagle next to it is from a uh, Schillenbaum, the Jingling Johnny uh, parade items. Terrific stuff. I know hey, we're back in the exhibit area here at the Mac Show, and we ran into John Welch. John, you got some fantastic things here. Can you tell us a little bit about this sword? I see Herman Goring playing an accordion. That that's of interest. So there must be some tie-in. Is that true? Oh, it most certainly is. Yeah. Well, anyway, this was given to him about after the Anschluss, uh, about 1938. That was the date of the Anschluss. That's right. And he came in. This was given to him by the Hunt Club in Lungau in the province of Salzburg. Uh -huh. And he used this sword. This sword here and uh, hunt it with it as he always did he honored the swords by bloodying them so we know he had his hands on this one do you think he was a member of that club or they just he was an honorary member was honorary member absolutely yeah. since yeah. he was the hunt meister well yeah that you folks know that Goring was quite a hunter and he was the Jägermeister of all of Germany so uh, these kinds of things would have been a Absolutely. You, know, you want to schmaltz up people. Business was no different then than it is today. This is true. Absolutely. What is the grip made out of? That is gold. And, it's gold. Uh, yes, it's a fox on a tree stump. You'll see the all the accoutrements and the Jaeger rifle. And wow. It's quite a unique piece. No this, scabbard with it? Or? No scabbard. It came from Andrew Wright's collection. Uh -huh. uh, this is pictured in uh, Johnson's book, Volume 2. Oh. So, uh, I've had this piece, I guess, since about 1990. I don't remember ever seeing it, so I'm glad to see it here at the Mock Show. That's where it should be. Absolutely. Well, we love the show. It's a great show. Did you get a good response for the sword? I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah. That's, uh, that's why I come to this show. It's just the, the people here, they get it. They understand. Well, they, know, they understand. They do. You have an interesting uh, knife sharpener here. <laughs> Can you believe the butcher's uh, guild? Yeah, isn't that something with the gilded mounts and everything? Mm -hmm. Not many of those around. And uh, No, I should say, wow. What is the grip on that? Is it just it's wood? Ebony. Yeah, oh, it's ebony. It is okay. ebony. Yeah. Uh, it's wow. a little different than the other the few yeah. pictures that I have seen. Yeah. Uh, it is a little bit different. So, so it was from the guild itself. Right. The, uh, the butcher's guild. So they probably displayed it. Would you think in the office or something no, like that? They carried that? them. They actually carried them. They, they used this to sharpen knives, or well, well probably not. not. But just, they did. Uh, yeah, they, they actually could've. carried them as a sign. I'm sure, knowing the Germans, it worked. So. You know it did. Yes, sir. They have it. So. Uh, uh, there it will are. work. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Well, we really thank you for coming. My pleasure. And it's wonderful to see such nice stuff like this. So well, we thank you for good a great show, you, as sir. always. Thanks. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Well, here we are, folks. We just got back from the uh, 28th Annual Mac Show 2012. And we want to thank all the dealers, collectors, and local attendees that came in to sell things and buy things. We had a great show. In fact, we uh, sold out completely with our tables, so that's always a good sign. Uh, most of the dealers did very well despite the economy, so I'm happy to report that um, collecting militaria is still alive and well uh, despite the recession. It's always been a good investment in the past, and I'm sure it will continue into the future. So what I want to remind you of, a couple things. Uh, if you'd like to have a max program from this year's show, uh, send us about 10 bucks and we'll be glad to send you a, uh, a copy of it. It's really great. It's all completely in color. Uh, it has many of you pictured in it. Uh, it's a great program to keep and, and put with your library. 
There's also a lot of dealer advertisements with people that you might want to deal with. It's a very worthwhile publication. Weighs a ton too, so I'm sure you'll like it. And also, it's time to think about next year's show. The show dates are October 4th and 5th, uh, 2013, with setup uh, on October 3rd. So try and get your table reservations in as early as possible because I'm sure we're going to have a complete sellout and uh, we don't want you on some waiting list. You also, we have hotels all around the area, great restaurants, and Pittsburgh is truly a fine city anymore. It's not some old uh, steel town. It's really wonderful with lots to do, and you might consider bringing your family with you too for next year. I'm sure they would enjoy it. So thanks a lot for everything. I'm glad that everybody had a good time, and we hope to see you all there at the Mac Show in 2013. Have a great year. Keep buying. And remember, buy low, sell high if you can, uh, but you'll always do fine with your military goods. So thanks a lot for everything.